all art has to do with light. Whatever the art is based on light. I think, uh, I think plays are based on light, not on lighting, but on light. And that the real thing is at the back of every artist's intention, I think, an intention towards the representation of light, the light that comes off the page. And that the greatest um, writers have that quality of light, and so do the painters. There's a light inside Vermeer, outside of the paintings of Vermeer, and that light that is painted by Vermeer comes because a light is inside of him and not necessarily the one that he tries to represent. And that is true of any great, great artist. And my attempt to paint is not to try to achieve that. I don't have any ambition uh, in my painting short of trying to make a thing feel as if it were alive, including a face, including anything, any object. So I haven't done much painting in the States, uh, whereas the rhythm in St. Lucia is totally different. The excitement in it is that it hasn't been really th thoroughly painted. It's a, you know, there are good painters in the Caribbean, but what you feel is that, you know, you and probably two other people uh, have all this stuff to you, you know, and you don't do it justice enough, obviously, but the fact is it's out there waiting to be made articulate or visible. I don't believe, for instance, in abstraction, really. I'm not a fan of it. I have a lot of things to say about it. Uh, I think it's part of 20th century vanity. So that I could have done, or I could do, things that were based on imagination, or whatever you want, or history, or metaphor even, so that they would not be representational or, or realistic. But the life around me is alert, it's botanically vivid. It's there, you know, and very unpainted. So I don't know why I want to look at a pawpaw tree and be stunned by, you know, the symmetry of it, and then decide I'm going to do something called the essence of a pawpaw tree. The same thing I think happens in verse and in prose. That the, the repre it's very, very difficult to do what is real, you know. You very rarely say about a poem, this is shit, because you feel that maybe there's something in there, there's something spiritual, something true, something, something, you know, and you never, and the verse can help you, make you believe that it's really pretty good. You can't do that with a painting. You know very fast that this is a piece of crap, you know, and there's nothing much you can do to save it, right? And the more you try to save it, the worse it gets, especially in watercolor. But you never, you certainly don't get any, I don't get any kind of joy from writing a poem. I get a lot of joy in working on a long thing that is like a job, you know, um, going to work in the morning and doing that. In terms of um, any kind of, it's impossible, I think, for any serious writer, poet particularly, to feel that this is a very good poem. You know, I like it or something. I don't think it's possible. It's very permissible to enjoy a painting that you have done. That's perfectly okay, <laughs> I think, because it's so physical. You have it there, you can see the little piece that you did right, the eye looks good, or, you know, or the shadow of that thing on the ground looks great. That's okay. I, I permit that. The other one is vanity. I don't know about that. Even in Larkin, you have him saying, uh, if I were made to construct a religion, it would be out of water. Something light would congregate endlessly. That's beautiful. He's just talking about a glass of water, the prism of that. And it's true in Rilke when he says, you know, we write so we can pronounce the words house and bread and stuff like that. And it's true. And I think that's what you try for all your life. What I hope for is to try and get to that anonymous serenity that says something without a cloud of identity or of biography of, you know, anything that ascribes it to me. An ideal would be to be really anonymous for the I to disappear between the object 
and you.